Each week, I hope this podcast gives you a boost, empowers you to be your best self. And I was so drawn to working with Mighty Meals. Their mission starts with empowering you to live healthier lives. I love that Mighty Meals is a convenient, healthy meal delivery service made with locally sourced ingredients by chefs. If you're in the DMV, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, for those outside the DMV, then head to eatmightymeals.com slash news for a special offer of $25 off for purchases of $75 or more. And don't worry, if you're outside of the DMV, they are expanding soon. Hi, and welcome to the Your Good News podcast with me, your host, Katherine Getty. Each Thursday, I'll give you the scoop on the good news coming out of Washington and how you can get involved with this thing called democracy. Welcome back to another episode of the Your Good News podcast coming to you live where, as I record this, we have an update on the Senate, but control of the House still remains pretty up in the air. So I'm going to get you caught up on the races of interest in the House and Senate and then give you a peek behind the curtain of what will happen in D.C. this week. What what are the kind of things that are brewing? So late Saturday night, we learned that Democrats would retain control of the Senate. And I highlighted last week that there were three races kind of up in the air. Georgia, we learned near the end of last week that Senator Raphael Warnock and his challenger Herschel Walker would be heading to a runoff the distance between them was so, so tiny. They'd be heading to a runoff on December 6th. And that's based on Georgia law, where the winner needs to have 50 plus one to actually win. So neither of them achieved that. It was like a 49, 48. So that will be heading to a runoff on December 6th. So I personally feel very sad for Georgia voters. So if you know a Georgia voter, give them a hug, give them a call. And then in Arizona and Nevada, what happened? So Friday, we learned that Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona would win re-election against his challenger, Blake Masters. And then on Saturday, we learned that Senator Catherine Cortez Masto would re- win re-election from her challenger, Adam Laxalt. Both of those races were so close, as I discussed last week, but it was, I mean, very close very close. And I think it's important that we reflect on that these races are really close. I'll talk a little bit more about that and what I'm hoping to see comes out of that. Uh, But I will also be a realist in this podcast. So the Senate, we know the Dems are going to take control. Just covered that. The House, though, is another story. I'm recording this on Monday of this week. So November 14th. As I record this, it is like 2.12 to 2.06, I think. It is very close. To get to a majority in the House, you need to get to 2.18. So do I think that Republicans will still eke it across the line? Yeah, but I think more so than ever, we need to realize this is the second Congress where it is essentially a 50-50 Senate, and it is essentially a House majority that is razor thin. I think hopefully... If I want to be idealistic, will this inform how each party kind of deals with the issues and how they address the policy matters that are most important to voters and the people that they represent? Yeah. Do I think it's going to be some pretty tough votes and they're going to have to figure out in the House, all right, are we doing messaging where all the Republicans vote together or are we going to do a bipartisan bill? to try to get something across the desk. Maybe that's in the opioid crisis. You know, I think it's, I'm always a pretty big fan of divided government because I think that we are all more similar than we are dissimilar. And I think oftentimes a divided government kind of makes that bipartisanship be forced a little bit. I don't know how that's going to turn out because fun little reminder, next election will be a presidential, which is always an X factor Starting maybe this week, we will hear people starting to say they're throwing their names in the hat to be in the running for president. We'll see what happens with that. I hope that we can maybe take a breath, but I I, I doubt that's going to happen. You know, I, I have always believed, and this podcast is built on the idea that we are more similar than we are different. We all want to live in a safe, happy, thriving community. We all hope for the best, Um, but we just simply disagree and vehemently sometimes we disagree on how do we achieve that. And this next Congress will have their fair share of disagreements, but I hope 
that both parties, maybe after a second really close uh, election night, that they will realize, okay, we got to work more from the middle. The polls of both parties are not what we want, um, but we'll see. And we're going to have to compel that. We're going to have to continue to call Congress, you know, get involved with your grassroots organizations, continue to be active, continue to get people registered to vote, continue to be a part of the conversation because we're a better society when we are engaged in our democracy. So let's switch gears a little bit and discuss what's happening as Congress returns this week. You know, they're coming back after a busy election season, and they've got some pretty big end-of-year items to cross to cross off their list. Um, for starters, government funding. Yes, you heard that again. Feels like a perennial thing that they talk about, but they had kicked the can from that fiscal uh, deadline at September 30th towards Friday, December 16th. It is typically a CR when there's a midterm. Or when there's election, it is basically based on maybe it's, you know, in that election year, they can't get the things across the line because it's too divided. Maybe it's a leverage piece. Maybe it's a lot of a leverage piece. But they're going to need to get some government funding done. And right before I recorded this, I saw that Senator Leahy, who's retiring from Vermont, who's been a part of the Senate, he's a chair of Appropriations Committee, said, They've agreed to top line numbers. And basically that means, okay, this is kind of where we can max out on our spending. And then they basically split it across discretionary and mandatory spending. So it's going to be interesting to kind of see where the funding levels end. If I was a guessing person, I think that maybe there would be a second CR, maybe to December 23rd. Yes, right before Christmas. Maybe it'll be a little bit longer into March or February of the next year. It's going to be, I doubt very highly that they get to a full fiscal year. So it will be 2023, September 30th of 2023. I doubt that they get that far, but maybe, maybe we'll see. So Congress is coming back with that. They also need to do National Defense Authorization Act. This is basically, you know, I've talked about there is authorizing and appropriating committees in Congress. Authorizing, the easy way to remember it is they create programs. Appropriating is they give the money for those programs. So they got to go hand in hand. National Defense Authorization Act is a bill that's been passed every year since 1961. It is, no one wants to be seen as not supporting the troops, if I'm going to boil it down. Um, And so... It's going to be something that sets the policies under which the appropriating can get done. I see that as something that's going to be must pass. I think some lesser known items, maybe they'll do something with additional user fee agreement, items that have fallen out. I'll give you a rundown if that starts to pick up steam. I think that there's some taxes tax extenders that may get included at the end of the year package, but I mean, time will tell. I think this this week is going to be interesting, not only from, okay, we got to get this done before the end of the year, but I'm going to layer on top of that, there are leadership elections. So for Republicans this week, they're going to be voting on their part, on their leadership in the House and in the Senate. There had been calls that the Senate Republicans would postpone similar in the House from a group called the Freedom Caucus. They're more of a conservative group, kind of Think of the Tea Party, but even more conservative, I could probably say. We will see kind of where that lands. The Senate also is kind of in a similar path where there are some senators who want to delay elections given that they don't know what's happening in Georgia. I think both of those move forward. I will include an, I will include an editor's note in the show notes and on my post if they get these delayed to any degree. On the dim side, though, they have until early December, so a little bit more time. But I think those kind of leadership conversations suck a lot of oxygen up in Washington. And so you'll probably have been seeing on the news, it felt like the election happened, and now it turned to who is going to be running those, the House and the Senate. It's really important, but it has sucked up the oxygen on some good policy that could be getting done. But I digress. 
programming note. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish the episode today with a little programming note. You know, as I think about the podcast, where it's been, what we're going to tackle in the future, I'm going to continue to give you updates on what's happening in Washington, some history, some context on features of our government, some more of the good that's coming out of Washington. And my goal is to continue to be your updated version of Schoolhouse Rock that actually tells you how a bill becomes a law. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. So weekly, each Thursday, an episode where you stream podcasts will already be there. Also, leave a review, share with someone you know, post about it. Find me on Instagram. My handle is at Katherine Getty. I'd always love to hear your feedback on this episode, what you'd like to hear, maybe what you want to hear less of. And as always, I share more about myself on my Instagram, on my website, yourgoodnewspodcast.com. And thank you again for joining this week and tune in next week for another episode of the Your Good News Podcast.